<laughs> hey, welcome. We are on the air hey, now. <laughs> Sarah, you are. Thank you for catching that. Oh, my goodness. I was so caught up in getting people on. Hey, Voice of Truth, their first blab, too. We have a few first timers here, so that is really fun. Um, welcome, you guys. Um, okay, so today we are chatting with Julie Fuller of Tokyo Hi, Blossom. Hey, um, <laughs> on Etsy. And so we're going to try to help her brainstorm ways that she can be growing her Etsy shop and getting more sales and just growing her business. So, um, Julie, if you want to start out by just introducing yourself, telling everyone a little more about you. Sure. Okay. So um, I definitely want like specific answers. So I'm going to give my very specific story. I've never actually told the in-depth about my shop before. I think I've just told oh, you good. briefly a little bit, Bethann, but this is actually, I started my shop back in 2010 and um, it was out of a time where I was very serious about changing my life circumstances. And so in some ways I really relate to Crystal Payne from Money Saving Mom. And every time I read her book, I like totally cry. <laughs> but um, my husband and I got married in 2008, right whenever the whole financial crash happened. And he had a really promising job there as an intern, as a graphic designer, and that fell through. And so we just had so many on and off jobs through the several years after that. And then in 2010, I got this brilliant idea. I was like, oh, I want to start an Etsy shop. Well, it started out as um, I was making handmade bags. And then I realized that sewing was not my God-given talent. <laughs> so I completely rebranded a year later, and then I started crocheting and knitting accessories. But I tell people that I really feel like my shop didn't come to life until this year at the beginning. Um, I was inspired by um, Ashley over at the Wolfful podcast, and she really gave some in-depth ideas and behind quality fibers and yarns. And so I really wanted to bring up the quality of my shop. And then that was about the time I emailed Beth Ann and I was like, Hey, I want to change some things up. And she was like, well, why don't you try some brighter colors? And that's where everything just completely took on a new identity. My shop took on a new identity. It looked totally different. And that's where I'm at right now. And this is honestly the most it's grown in a long time. So super excited about it. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And I will say, um, you know, Julie, and I know I've told you this before, I think you are so talented at crochet. And so I think you have the first step down. Like you said, I think a lot of times when people start an Etsy shop, they just, they maybe have a little bit of an interest or hobby and, right. um, but, but the skill level might not be quite there yet. And for right. you, you've got that covered. So <laughs> you're off to a great start with, you know, you're super talented with your knitting Thank and you. crochet. And let me, I'm going to drop the link to your shop in here so people okay. can be um, following along if they want to. Um, okay. And so you were saying that, you know, since you've kind of rebranded and you're doing brighter, bolder colors, which I think is awesome. Right. That, was, that was kind of, um, you know, an idea just to to help you stand out right. from all the other knitters out there because they do tend to do a lot of the neutral colors and, I think there's plenty of, of fun, uh, vibrant ladies out right. there yeah, <laughs> who want to want a hand knit um, or hand crochet product. Um, so how, like since the rebranding, um, how's everything going? Um, maybe share some things that are, are working well and then we can dig into maybe some things that aren't working as well. Sure, sure. Um, on a personal level, I'm definitely, I feel like I'm more confident about my shop because I'm actually awesome. really proud of it, you know. Yes. Um, I did a lot of research on companies that I really admire that kind of have, they don't have the same product, but they have the same outlook and philosophy. And mm -hmm. one of them that I really love is like Kate Spade, the handbag company. They're super bright and bold. But at the same time, you don't find a vinyl purse there. You find a genuine leather purse there. Yeah. So it's quirky quality and stylish at the same time. And that's that. kind of what I really want to go for. And so that's why, like I, like I said, I brought up the quality of my materials and then, you know, inspired by you, Bethann, I really, you know, oh. with the brighter colors and yeah, yeah. So that's kind of the direction I'm wanting to go. So I'm definitely more confident about my shop and I feel like I'm able to tell people locally about it without being embarrassed or shy about it. I'm like, Hey, I make quality knitwear, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. And I've definitely seen a huge turnaround in, um, 
personal sales for, through people that I know because of that. Okay. Um, I'm still struggling a little bit with people that I don't know <laughs> and bringing the traffic in from elsewhere. Um, I've had a couple of sales that were people that I didn't know, but mostly it's been people I know so far. Okay. I'm going and checking out your shop front right now too, just to see. Yeah. I had a question, Julie. I know sure. that when we, I mean, we've known you since early days of our podcast, which yeah. is, which is so fun that I know you've mostly connected with Bethann over the past year and a half, but, um, but you contacted us really early in our podcasting right. uh, life, I guess. And I know that initially you started off with your crochet earrings. And I have to say your shop, right. it looks fabulous. Thank I you. hadn't seen it in a while. It, it is a big change and it looks wonderful. Thank so you. I was wondering, I know that crochet earrings was kind of where you were at early on. And right. And you've made a shift to some other products with your cowls right. and your coasters. So what was that decision like? And how do you think that has helped or not helped adding more products or? It's definitely helped. Um, it was a, for me, it was a hard decision because I, that was kind of like my baby was the crochet jewelry. And I actually got a feature in a craft magazine in the UK back in 2013 for that. So I thought, oh, I must be going in the right direction. The problem with that was, was while it was unique, instead of attracting actual customers, it was attracting other um, crafters who wanted new ideas. So when mm -hmm. I did the ads, everybody, all those ads, the, the money for the ads was getting eaten up by other crafters on Etsy looking for unique items. And like I was Etsy promotional listings. That's what yeah, you mean by Etsy ads. Okay. Yeah. So I was like, oh man, <laughs> this is not good. And then when you, you search it at the time, I, it might have changed by now, but at the time it wasn't really a prop, popular product. And that's when I realized that um, I need to stand out but I need to find something that's trending and stand out within something that's trending rather than just trying to create my own whole new category because it wasn't working, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so that's how that completely changed over. And um, yeah. yeah. I think, I think that's an interesting point because you're, you're right. It's, it's this balance between we all want to stand out and have kind of this, this firm brand identity. Right. But I mean, I know we've run into the struggle you ran into with um, the amateur naturalist, which is that the idea of having a butterfly terrarium is so unique that yeah. a lot of people are just like, what? Like, I don't, they, you know, they don't know what to do with it. So sometimes right. that's trickier to market versus like, um, you know, your adorable mittens and, and cowls and those things. It's like everybody is familiar with those, but you set yourself apart with the colors and the brand and the feel. Right. Yeah, I agree with the amateur naturalist. It's how do you sell a product that nobody knows they're looking for or that right. nobody <laughs> is looking for? Yeah. Um, it, it gets trickier. So, the crochet earrings uh, that was really different and unique. And, but I did notice, I was curious that even though you've added other products and that seems to be a good move and going well for you, that you don't have your earrings still listed anymore. I didn't see yeah. them on your shop at all. So you just decided that that you weren't going to make those folk put any energy into right. that avenue anymore. Um, Right. I did sell few, a few, but it was so far and few between that I was like, you know, I probably need to just emphasize on what's selling right now so I can build up my business. And then in the future, whenever I'm doing a little bit better, I may be able to go back in and add something for fun that's not a seasonal product. You know, that's another challenge that I have. Sorry. <laughs> my son's asleep. My husband crawled Your behind me on the floor. Not a kid, a husband. <laughs> well, my husband's self-employed too. He's a graphic designer. Yeah. So we have a joint office space. So he's always like hiding and trying to crawl by. That's so funny. We've never had a husband in before. <laughs> hey, honey, say hi. Hi! <laughs> this is Scott, everybody. Say hey, hi to Scott. Scott. <laughs> nice to meet you. Guys. All good. <laughs> that was too 
my money. <laughs> we're getting ready to order a bed for my four year old because he's outgrowing his other one. So he's like, Is this the one we're going to order? You know? <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Um, But what was I saying? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. uh, You were talking about sticking with other products. And I think that does make sense because every item that you add to your shop, that's different inventory that you have to have on hand. Or like you're still focusing in some way to create that listing. So I can see that making a lot of sense. That's actually another reason why um, I know there's knitwear and crochet wear um, shops on Etsy that take complete uh, custom listings. Like they say, hey, just throw whatever you want to at us and we'll make it. But that's actually why I don't do that because Mm -hmm. I make exceptions for like the colors, the six colors that I have within my color palette. Anything you see in my shop you can have made in any of those six colors. But outside of that, I really limit what kind of custom orders I take because a lot of times if someone who doesn't knit or crochet comes to you and says, hey, I found this awesome product and I'd really like for you to recreate it, a lot of times that involves a different kind of fiber, yarn, um, a different color. I may have to special order it. And then if it's a small item, once I get done making that, a lot of times you have yarn left over. I'm stuck with this, you know, inventory that I can't use really. So that's what, another reason why I really limit my custom orders. I think that's really smart. I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, Yeah, I think the custom orders is tricky unless, you know, there's a few shops that do it well by just if you charge a huge, crazy amount. Yeah, (laughs) but yeah, exactly. Other than that, it's like, yeah, do, you know, streamline. And I like that you focused on those six colors that are all they go together. They look beautiful and it, yeah, limit your inventory. So I think that's awesome that you're figuring out that part of, you know, streamlining your business so that when the sales come in, you're going to be ready. You're going to ready to go for those um oh and bring up betty sarah had a question for you sure. um, real quick before i move on to some other stuff she said are you well she said cute stuff first of all <laughs> are you are you only selling on etsy or do you do craft fairs etc um right now i am mainly selling on etsy i actually did a craft fair back in february it was a very very small local one And it wasn't a very good experience because um, they had a deal worked out with the, um, what what is it called? The um, business, what's the local business community? Better Business Bureau? Chamber of Commerce. Chamber Commerce. Chamber of Commerce, yeah. They had a, a deal worked out with the Chamber of Commerce for advertising, and the lady who was in charge of it paid for it and everything. There was a miscommunication. They pulled up all her signs the night before. So oh, no. we had like just very little traffic come through and I think I made two sales. So I was like, oh man, I don't oh. know if I want to do that again. So there are definitely bigger ones out there that are really good. Um, you know, you're going to sell out kind of deal, but they're also very expensive to get into and you have to get in way early. And because I really didn't start getting my current inventory made and whatnot until September, it was a little bit late to try to get okay. in this year. But next year, that's something I definitely want to look into and start doing. Back when we were in the handmade jewelry business, we we actually did craft fairs like pretty extensively. And what we found was we there were a couple of churches in our local area that each year put on a craft show that is well well attended and well regarded. Like it's the, right. it they are like the craft shows for for the area that we live in. And now they did have like big waiting lists a lot of times, Mm -hmm. but normally we could get a table for like $80. And I mean, the place was just packed and the sales were always right before Christmas. So they were like November, early December, but we were applying probably back in May or June yeah, to be in these craft shows. So the, right. the Christmas craft shows that have been going on for a really long time, at least in our area, they were they were doing pretty well. And I and your items are so gift worthy. Yeah. They are they are Thank perfect. You. Yeah. The coasters, the the coffee mug cozies. Yeah. Yeah. I I I, I totally understand your reasons for this year. <laughs> that makes sense. You're just I mean, you have to get up that inventory. Right. You have to know you're 
do it really early. But right. for next year, I think you could kill it at a craft fair. I would love yeah. to see that because um, that was the big thing too was, you know, it didn't go over very well, but it was definitely a great learning experience. And I love, you know, decorating the table to make it look like an actual miniature shop right there. So, you know, it's it's not that I don't enjoy it. I definitely love it. It was just it didn't go over very well, you yeah. know, so oh, we for next year. We definitely attended some serious duds, and that's what, the problem really? with craft fair. Oh, my goodness. Aww. Huge duds. Where we were sitting there, and, I mean, there were no customers. So it's even if you, I mean, you can't sell anything to no customer. So it, it definitely takes some trial and error, which is frustrating because craft fairs are a lot of time. So, but Angie had a great tip, yeah. um, gathered and sewn to ask your local maker community about what the best craft fairs are. And okay. I think that is a that is great advice yes, to yes. find out from others in your area what the best ones are. And probably the makers, you're right, Angie, because the customers may think they're great, but they don't know if people are really buying at those. Yeah, products. that's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. You need buyers. Yes. Customers. Not browsers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Angie gave you you're like, what? Can't you bring yeah. this down, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I think too, I mean, I think about um, your products and, you know, craft fairs are usually like moms who tend to go to those and even maybe moms that are a little bit older than us. I totally see those moms who have maybe a teens and tweens like that age buying your gorgeous, brightly colored knitwear for their for their daughters. I think okay, it's yeah. perfect. I think they would totally go and be like, yes, absolutely done. Um, and then Angie said some of the best shows for sellers are the smaller boutique ones. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Too. And again, it's like you, you never quite know until yeah, right. you talk to others, other that's makers. Right. Yeah, see what's going to work for them. Um, oh, another point I was going to bring up. I know when you were talking about your crochet earrings, I love that your products now are a little bit higher priced because, right. one, I love that because then you have a higher perceived value on your craft, on your skill, on your products, and they totally right. they've earned that value. I mean, for everyone listening, I have one of Julie's um, cowls, and it's amazing. I've ordered other handed items from shop. I should have one right here. <laughs> for you. But yeah, it's so much better quality than other ones I've had. And I started messing with it, and there's like five ways I can wear it. It's, it's so much fun. Um, and yeah, so I've ordered other hand knit stuff that disappointed me, but Julie's, I was like, oh no, this is it's it's worth the price. Um, but all that to say, too, the other thing is, well, well, two, your profit margin could hopefully be better. But right. three, one thing that I found with Etsy promoted listings, because we started doing those with our new little shop, Brilliant Business uh, Mom, and you know, I'm still learning. I, we still need to fill out that shop, but. The more expensive the product is, the more Etsy will promote that listing for you. Time really? and time again, yes. And I, I figured out why because I was like, duh, this <clears throat> totally makes sense. Okay, so think about it this way. Etsy's whole goal is for Etsy to make money, right? I mean, they wow. just want they want everybody to be selling more so that they can make a profit. I mean, they're an IPO right. now. They, they want profits. Um, so here's the thing. If there are two listings, because I found this, for example, with our planners, if somebody has a $5 printable planner and somebody else, for example, when we had our $25 brilliant business planner, which one, if Etsy promotes those, which one is going to give them more profits? Because gotcha. the fee that they get, it's the $25 planner. And that's why, too, you guys, I started doing like those cutesy little printables that were just $5. Those are so hard to promote. I mean, one, the market is saturated, but two, Etsy wasn't going to show my fall decor printable for $5 over somebody else who had a fall decor item that was like a gorgeous print that cost $25 or a beautiful fall like um, a wreath for your door that costs $75, those people have it made. Etsy is going to promote their listing over and over. And the other thing too with that is for the Brilliant Business Planner at just 25 bucks, I can promote that and get it at three cents a click. So it's, I mean, that's like a steal. You really can't find three cents a click anywhere else. So that is that's something really I would, to know. yeah, I would encourage, especially for your most expensive items, I would encourage trying out the promoted listings again, like your cowls, which are, you know, I see some for 52, 58. I mean, 
I would um, I would encourage you to try promoting those again. Okay. And yeah, and seeing how they do. And you could even start out. One thing I did was I started out by overbidding so that Etsy would notice them, and then I dropped the price way down. Mm -hmm. But I think with but I think with that with your price because I don't want you to you know spend any more money than you have to. I think with the price of your items and how beautiful they are, maybe start out look like lowballing your bid. You know, I feel able to start out that way, and Etsy may take notice right away because they know. Right. Your knit scarf at that price is much better for them to get a sale on than somebody else's for thirty dollars. I have noticed that I um, did an ad for a couple of the hats, and um, I think the tag was like hipster hat. And for a couple of days, I was on the first page, so I was really excited about that. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. Yeah. yeah. And then the nice thing about the ads. Once you, if you run them and you get clicks, attention, sales, mm -hmm. that's going to carry on and give yes. you more progress. And yes. but even if you stop the ads, yes, you're you know you're back ranking. up to the Etsy juice that's going to help right. you long term in your shop. Yeah, yeah, that's the other thing people. Um, People have a misunderstanding about the Etsy promoted listings because they think, okay, well, if I promote my listing and I get sales, okay, great. But as soon as I turn that promotion off, aren't my sales going to dry up? And no, that's totally, like Sarah said, that's totally not true. Because, that's good to those, know. yeah, because those clicks and those sales that you got, I mean, that's like the most important thing. I would promote a listing either until you realize it's not doing well or until you get some sales. Once you have right. those sales under your belt with that promoted listing, Etsy is like, it's gold. They know that listing is a money maker, and they're going to give you a high ranking. Um, I was wondering yeah. about that because um, whenever I launched my fall line towards the end of September, I, I got a ton of sales at once. And the products that sold the best were suddenly like being looked at a lot. Yeah. And it was over yes. and beyond what I was promoting. So um, mm -hmm. that makes sense now. Yeah. And then the other thing that's coming to play is every time your item sells, it's like Etsy like automatically renews that listing for you, essentially. Right. So the recency of that listing also plays a really big role in SEO. So that's the other thing. Like once you like it's so hard as a new shopper with a new line, but once you get that momentum of like sales going and sales going, it's like, man, it can it can really just snowball for you because those listings are getting sales, so they keep renewing, so they keep getting pushed to the front. So, right. yeah. Oh, I had a question about that. So um, if when you sell something, it automatically gets renewed, obviously. So whenever that happens, what's the difference between me renewing something? Because I generally make that part of my habit. Like first thing in the morning on rotation, I just renew the most, the oldest listing that I have. So that way okay. every day it's bumping back up to the top. And I just do mm -hmm. one of those a day. So between me okay. doing that and then something getting sold and automatically getting renewed, is there a difference between like the, well, if you want to call it the potency of you yeah. know, how that works with Etsy? The, there is because that sold item is something that like Etsy gives a lot of weight to an item that is selling well. So okay. um, and that's something new that I've been learning about. So that sold item is going to do better because they okay. again, it's like for them, it's all about how they can make money. And so they mm -hmm. want they want to they push the shops that are getting the most sales. And that's where it can feel discouraging as a new seller because you're like, well, they're getting all the attention and all the juice. It's like you <laughs> it's have, like to, you have to like, like why? Yeah, you have to like <laughs> fight to the top. And then once you can like crawl your way to the top, <laughs> then they'll do the same for you. Right. So, um, yeah, so the sold item is going to do better. And that's another thing I was going to say, though, is, um, and that's a good strategy to be renewing your listings because totally helps, totally helps. And anytime I change keywords on my listings or things like that, I always renew them too because I know that that does give them an SEO bump. Okay. Um, but one thing you may want to start doing is um, go and see which items are selling the best. Okay. And focus on, although it's, it's kind of counterintuitive because those items are automatically renewing on their own. But let's say you have a top seller, but maybe it doesn't have a sale on a certain day or it's been two days since you've had a sale on a top seller. Right. Renew that item because okay. then you can kind of get it back okay. in the flow again. Good so that would be yeah, my advice there because a lot of times it's like just a handful of listings are the ones where they're bringing in the most views and sales and so yeah. it almost is like invest in those and then once people get your shop I mean they'll see your other items but anyways that's just another strategy for yeah, you yeah that's really good to know 
I'm looking over here at the comments. <laughs> yeah, do you want to answer Love Lila Ann's question, Bethann? Yes. Um, let me, and I'm, uh, I was going to scroll back up here real quick to see if I missed anything, although it's not, it doesn't seem to let me, hold on one second, you guys. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Sarah, if you had something. No, I didn't. I, I don't think we've missed any other questions. That's okay. all I was going to say. Uh, and you've okay, experimented great. more with the Etsy ads, so. Yes. Um, <laughs> I gathered and sewn. I know how you feel because, like, every time I listen to a podcast, I'm like, okay, where is where was my sh shop? I gotta change everything on it now. <laughs> they come yeah, get advice. Like, I gotta do that now. Oh, uh, yeah, and it's. I mean, and that's the thing. SEO is like there is an art to it. It's not. It's not always like a cut and dried. It's like I can give a lot of tips and strategies, but there is. Yeah, there is a lot of like trial and error and, you know, what keyword phrases work for your shop and what attracts that ideal customer. Oh, um, too, while I'm thinking about that with the tags, I have found that if y'all, if there's any other fiber artists on here, um, you know, if you crochet an item, I know it's, you know, you want to put down crocheted, but just be very careful about how you tag an item saying it's crocheted this or that. There is something about the crochet community. Not everybody, okay, so I love you crocheters, I crochet too. <laughs> but um, I have found that a lot of times when I tag something with crochet, it attracts other people looking to copy your item versus if I put knit something or rather, it's like somebody who actually wants a knitwear item. Wants to buy it. So hmm. just be careful about that. It's not true all the time, but eight times out of 10, I have found that that is what happens. <laughs> So the that's buyer really doesn't know that they want something that's crocheted. Yeah, the, they think is knit kind of like a more general term, I guess. Yeah, I it's wouldn't. Very, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't type in crochet if I was looking for right. a scarf like you're wearing. Right, oh, right. So generally, yeah, ends up thinking the crochet is like, oh, I want to find a good idea to you know borrow or whatever, and so that's a lot of times who it attracts. <laughs> so mm -hmm. industry terminology is not necessarily. Right. The best. Okay, that's yeah. really good to know. Yeah, it's not customer terminology. Okay, so um, yeah, let me move on to Jessica Lynn's question: How the ads work again on Etsy? So, um, Jessica Lynn, they are it's they're called promoted listings, and so essentially what happens is you go and on Etsy it, it'll be a toolbar at the top, and it'll say um, your shop, and then promote is an option, and then you go over to promoted listings, and then you can decide which of your listings um, you want to promote so you can pick whichever ones you want um, and then you can set up your budget now the interesting thing is Etsy limits your budget quite a bit like I think right now our cap is at $11 a day that we could be spending on promoted listings I think as you sell more um, they and promote more they can up that level but I think some people even start out at five dollars a day okay so then from there um, you can pick your max if you just want to start out at two dollars a day you can do that that's fine um, and then from there, you pick your bid per click on your listing. And Etsy will tell you what's recommended. So you can either go with like the auto bid and they'll say, oh, well, you know, we recommend you bid 20 cents for this one. You can say, sure, just automatically bid Etsy, whatever you think you want to do. Or you can put in your own bid. And so for me, I like to experiment a lot with the bidding. Um, Sometimes I overbid because I'm like, come on, Etsy, come on. I really want you to show my item over everybody else's. So let me overbid on this and it'll be worth it to me if I can get some sales and build some momentum. Other times, though, and particularly after I've gotten some sales on an item and it's doing really well, I'll cut it way down. I'll do three cents a click. Um, and I don't know. I think you can even do one cent a click if you want. I'll do like three cents a click. And guess what? Etsy will still show, show, show it. They'll show that listing all the time. And I'll get clicks at that really low level, which is amazing. I mean, getting three cents a click on, on your product, as long as you've priced it well, you're going to sell and you're going to be completely profitable way more than profitable so sorry another point with the promoted listings though is um well, I like to only do a handful at a time um, instead of like my whole shop at once because you kind of want to like filter out and, and bring a few to the top and get that sales kind of like the sales ball rolling. Um, I had another point there, too. Oh, and so the way it works, too, is they're pulling from your tags and your titles to decide 
um, where, when they're going to show your promoted listing. So, you know, you like Julie, if she had hers with hand knit scarf as one of her tags or titles, then Etsy could choose to show her promoted listing when somebody goes on Etsy, a potential customer, and they go and search hand knit scarf. Well, then Julie's could show up at the very top. So, and it'll say, it has a little thing in the corner that says add, but you know, it can really catch people's attention. And there's generally, so there's three at the top, or you could be three in the middle, and then they'll show them on every single page. So as you go through, so, but the, but the good news is you're not paying for impressions. You're only paying for clicks. Mm -hmm. So you're only paying when someone sees your listing photo and they're interested and they want to click over and check you out. So that's the other nice thing. I would much rather pay per click because I only want to pay for those interested customers who are, who want to come check out my shop. Okay. So yeah. So if you set your budget, Jessica Lynn at $2 a day, for example, you will not pay more than $2 a day. So I did hear some glitches like last year or the last few months um but i think now they've worked it out so you shouldn't yeah if that's your budget your daily budget you sh you won't pay more than two dollars a day conversely that means there's a chance that if you're bidding like 20 cents a click etsy could show your listings enough times that you run out of your budget in the morning and maybe most of your shoppers are coming on at night so that's something to think about too is like how fast is your budget running out every day in um in comparison to when your shoppers are actually or your customers are actually on Etsy. So if you do the manual bidding as opposed, like I think everything's set on auto bid for me right now. Is okay. that one of the benefits of having a manual bid to where it kind of spreads out as opposed to everything up front? Mm -hmm. Well, for, okay, so for me, to make sure ours gets spread out, yeah, it's kind of a combination. One, I set my budget high. Oh, and that's another thing to note. So, like, if I set my budget at the max, $11 a day, that doesn't mean Etsy's going to spend that every single day. Right. We have plenty of days where Etsy only spent a dollar of my money because they're balancing my promoted listings with all the thousands of other promoted listings. Right. And if I'm only bidding three cents a click, I have to get a lot, a lot of clicks for them to spend, <laughs> yeah, for them to spend my whole budget so yeah if you want it to be spread out for the whole day I recommend and obviously you have to check in every day to make sure you're not spending money like crazy but my recommendation is up the budget and lowball your bids okay so that's good to know is there a way to track when your budget runs out you should be able to see now Etsy I think takes like 24 hours to um, to show you your results or at least they take that long to show you what terms people are searching for. I'm going over to my promoted listing screen to see if I can show you. Like if I look just for today, I think it will show me like when people, yes, yeah, so it shows me when people are clicking. Like I had, you know, two clicks at 1 p.m. Eastern time. So it's showing me that. So you'll see um, if you go, you know, promote listing stats for today or stats for whatever specific day you want to look at, you'll see a little bar graph. So it'll show you like, oh, if you ran out of your whole budget, you'll see this drop off where you're getting no clicks, um, you know, starting at 6 p.m. or whatever the case is. So yeah, you will be able to tell that if Etsy is totally eating up your budget. Oh, and a general rule of thumb, you guys, is I feel like a listing is doing good in terms of attracting customers if I can get one click for every 50 impressions. So that's the other thing. I think sometimes we we wrongfully assume that like, oh, well, everybody's going to click. You know, everybody's <laughs> going to want to want my product. And we all have great products. Um, but yeah, it doesn't quite work that way. So I would say if you can get one click for every 50 impressions of that listing, then you're doing good. It's worth continuing on a little bit to see if you get some sales. But if it's taking like 100 impressions or definitely at 200 impressions, then that might be a product that maybe needs some work or maybe the photo needs tweaking or something like that because you're not getting enough interested customers for the number of people that are seeing that listing. You know what? That's a good point, Beth Ann. So Etsy promoted listings could almost be a testing ground for yeah. how is my product description, my photos, mm -hmm. to see if it is, when it is shown, is it appealing to customers? So then you know, even when you're not promoting, whether it's an appealing listing or not. I yeah. like that. Clever. Yeah. I 
Yeah, and I love promoted listings for that. For it is, it's like a product testing site. And mm -hmm. the other thing it'll tell you is which search terms are working really well with mm -hmm. your like. What are the search terms that people are searching for that um, that led them to go then click on your listing? So it's yeah. So it's great to test because you know for a lot of new shops, it takes a lot of time and work to be getting to the first page on your own. But if you use promoted listings, you can mm -hmm. bump yourself up the first page and then yeah you can really see okay what are what are those those money making search terms for me that yeah if my idle customer searches for they're gonna come right over to my shop oh Gavin and so it's okay if you're missing the good stuff we'll have the replay <laughs> so oh. <laughs> no worries um, oh we did have actually another question though up here I'm sorry and but I need to not we need to make sure we're still helping you strategize here, Julie. <laughs> I get off of my tangents. I could just go forever. Um, she said, uh, for listings with pricing variation, how does Etsy weigh that for promoted listings? Anyone know? Just curious. I didn't realize price. So you have a price variation within the same listing? See, that's what I'm not sure. If you could tell me more about that. Oh, I guess ahead. if it's a custom item, then you can actually, if it's like an add-on product onto an item, you can say, okay, this is like $2 more, $3 more, whatnot. And so in that sense, it would be a variable in price. Okay. Oh, gotcha. Okay. I think, well, I mean, I can't say for sure, but I would assume that Etsy's looking at just that main, the core price that you're, you know, if the core product is $25 and then it's plus whatever other thing, I would think you could kind of use that as your framework for how well they're going to promote it. Um, okay, so let's let's move on, I guess, a little bit. Um, or unless, do you have other questions about promoted listings or? No, 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 that was, that's great, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. And I will say too, I mean, it does, it is a lot of experimenting. Like when I'm actively doing promoted listings, um, like when I'm doing them aggressively, then I like to check in every day and kind of right. see what's working and what's not. And if, a, if something's not working well, I'll just, I'll shut that listing off and I'll try. Yeah. Try yeah, something. I'm different. like obsessively looking over my stats like every day <laughs> trying to figure out what works and what doesn't. So yeah, definitely good to know. Awesome. Um, okay. And then I'm curious for your Etsy shop traffic. Um, where is it coming from? Where are the main sources that you're getting? The main sources oh. are the um, the Etsy homepage and whatnot, like the main Etsy site. And then um, I don't think it tracks Instagram because it's just like, it's like yeah. So I'm assuming it's Instagram, traffic. right? Mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's Instagram because it shows, you know, Pinterest shows up, and I get a few from Pinterest, not a lot. I'm still working on my Pinterest pins and whatnot, but um, I do get quite a bit from Instagram. So that's okay. Really helpful. Yeah. Okay. Going to our stats to see. Um, and I know, I, I think right now, Julie, it's, it's a little tricky because I know like your budget in terms of marketing is, right. you know, pretty limited. So I'm trying to think of ways that, you know, cause even like doing a giveaway on a blog or something like that, well, that is, you know, that's still costing you materials. Yeah. And, you know, for your really nice quality items, I know that's got to be a decent expense. Um, One thing I found that really helped me is um, I have I don't do a lot of them because I don't want to exhaust it on my Facebook fan page. But I have done last year I did one and then not too long ago I did one right after the fall launch and I did a Facebook party. And okay. that actually brought in quite a, not quite a lot, but it did bring in quite a bit of traffic. And then I got several sales from that as well. And what I did was I did, I designated an hour and I had a few friends just tell their friends about, hey, Julie's having a Facebook party on her fan page. And then I promised everyone up front, I just told them the rules and I said, everybody gets a 10% off coupon just for participating. And then I'm giving away one grand prize. So it encouraged everybody to stay focused and enjoy the games and whatnot. And so every, I scheduled on my app to where every um, five to 10 minutes, there was a new game that you could participate in. And so after you each, at, for each question that you answered, you got um, party bucks. And so at the end, I added all those up and then whoever got the most, so essentially the more you participate, the more you, know, you get 
party bucks and the person who had the most got the grand prize and then everybody else got a 10% off coupon in the end. What I found with that was, is when I got started, I didn't have a lot of people involved. And then within halfway into the hour, I had people that I didn't know getting involved because Mm -hmm. they were seeing where their friends were liking it or commenting on it and it was showing up in their feed. And I I got a ton of traffic Mm -hmm. that day because of that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So can you, okay, so then there's something that's working. Is that something, because you're you're giving, I guess you're still giving away one grand prize, but if it's then bringing in other sales to your shop, is that something you could do a bit more often? I probably need to. I thought about, you know, it's not something I want to do too much because Mm -hmm. I don't want to decrease the value of my product. But mm-hmm. I didn't actually give a product away. I gave a $25 gift certificate away as a okay. grand prize. So a customer would potentially go in and see more that they wanted and be like, hey, mm-hmm. we're going to go shopping, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. So, yeah. I love that. Um, I was also going to suggest doing some loop giveaways on Instagram because right. I was also thinking in terms of – because these are both way – like doing doing the gift certificate to your shop as, as the prize is so much more – easy to do like financially right. because you know when you're doing a, gl- a blog feature a lot of times you have to send one to the blogger or you send or even if you're just sending one to the winner I mean that's a whole product right there that you're giving right. for free but you can do the same thing with an Instagram loop giveaway where I mean I've even seen loop giveaways where I think there were like 20 shops and all they were doing was $15 to mm-hmm. their shop and I remember I actually won one and I went to her shop and I was like oh I really can't buy that much I there's not really much for $15, but I still was kind of like, oh, but her stuff is cute. So let me use that. Right. So it's like she actually made money from doing the giveaway in addition to getting a ton more followers. So, well, Betsy, and how did she structure her? her gift certificate because that's the issue we keep coming back to with the Etsy promotional codes. You can't do just a straight dollar amount. You have to make it at least like what 90%. Like you yeah, ninety or ninety five percent of your minimum of the total right, sale right. Price. I did twenty five because um, most of my things in the shop are you know over. I, I mean, like the cup posies are about twelve and fourteen dollars, but most everything else is higher than that. So what I did was whenever I messaged the person, the winner with that, I'd let them know up front. I just say, you know, this is a twenty five dollar gift certificate, but you can you, you have to be able to purchase. X amount in order for it to work. So I just go ahead and let them know that as well. So that way they don't get to my shop and they're like, oh, it doesn't work, you know? <laughs> so I do let them know that. Okay. And Bethy, yeah. and yours, you just happened to find other stuff that you wanted. Like you never attempted yeah, to I didn't use attempt it. to just buy it twenty at $50. Um, but yeah, and I think for us, because I think we've done this once or twice before, I just told them like, hey, if you like – Oh, what did I say? I think I may have even had changed the coupon code because you're right. If like if they had added only twenty five dollars worth, Etsy wouldn't even let them use the code at all. Right. So right. I think then I made a different coupon code and then just like refunded them the rest of their purchase price, gotcha. I mean, something like that. Right. Um, yeah, and it is. I mean, it's really good when you do those giveaways with the shop credit because versus that product because the right. sales, all those sales really help getting right. those in your Etsy shop. So yeah, if I, I, that's, that's one thing, Julie, I, I would recommend, especially as we're getting close, you know, to the holidays and you're going to get a lot more sales, I think for your scarves and mittens right. and hats is doing a few Instagram loop giveaways, doing another Facebook party. Um, yeah, I think, I think that could really help you because it's a lower cost right. market. Um, Okay, we're, sir. we're part of a couple Pinterest group boards, Bethy and found them that allow yeah. you to pin like items in your uh, some only want you to pin Etsy items through right. the group board. And another one, had, I think. Have products. you guys had good success with that? Mm. That part is a little tricky to tell. We definitely get traffic from Pinterest. Mm -hmm. So that's the good news. We're getting traffic. Whether those are resulting in direct sales is a little bit, that's a little bit harder to tell. But 
the traffic helps for sure. I mean, one good thing you can do is you can add a coupon code just for your Pinterest customers. I mean, I still, oh, yeah, idea. so you can do like, we, we had that on our old shop, the Amateur yeah, Naturalist. So we say use the code PIN10 for 10% mm -hmm. off your product. It doesn't, for the level of traffic we would get for Pinterest, not very many people use the code because I think, I think they just see the picture and they're right. interested and they click over and they don't really pay attention, but it's, right. I mean, it's still worth trying and putting that in the That's a really good idea. I should yeah, try just that. To see. Just and your, to see your products are so universal. So I think that that might work right. better than, yeah. you know, some of, um, you know, some of our stuff that we've tried in the past. It is less universal. Right. Um, yeah. I could do that three, with like Instagram too. I was just going to mention really quick those oh, yeah. three group boards. Um, it's the Etsy Traffic Lab, I believe. The Wait, Etsy I Boost. Here, I think I have it written down. Oh, I moved that. And then the Pinterest Mini Mall Viral Board. Let me go get it because yeah. um, then I can tell you. Hold on one second. Oh, um, um, let's see. Is the Pinterest mini mall viral board, is that with um, Renee Christine? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. She's interesting. Um, <laughs> so, I, yeah. So, and that's the thing is you have to weigh your time versus what's working. Now, for us, though, we have viral tags. So, we can schedule right. out the pins and it doesn't take us any time at all. So, we can yeah. have an Etsy listing going to all these boards at all all the time and it doesn't take us a lot of time. Yeah, I, I did it this morning in like 10 minutes, yeah. all your new fall yeah. printables that you had done. Um, oh, cool. Um, one idea, though, because I think, you know, viral tag is a little bit expensive. I think it's like $30 a month. Yeah. But board booster, I think, is a lot cheaper. And with okay. board booster, what you could do is you can even create a secret board that has all of your Etsy listings on it. And then you take that secret board and you cycle it through all of those other Etsy group boards. And so okay. you can have one of your pins going out up to each board every hour. Um, yeah, so that's a thought because you definitely want to like set it and forget it. Um, although another thing I would recommend for you, Julie, is, and this was a way that we got a lot of new Pinterest followers, is um, when I started doing some seasonal boards that I knew just like women on Pinterest would like. Like I did a Valentine's Day board this past winter, and we started getting a lot more followers just because I was crazy active on that. I was really picky for like how I curated it because there's so many junky boards on Pinterest. It's right. insane. So I made sure my board looked super pretty. It was only the best photos. But you could do that for you with, you know, gift ideas, handmade gift ideas, um, gift ideas for her, um, winter, this, winter fashion. fashion. Is this like yeah. general pins that you're finding with great photos or is this like your yeah. own products? How did you do that? So Mixed. we would, yeah, a mix. So like on that mm -hmm. Valentine's Day board, we had done this cute little Valentine's Day um, craft on our old blog and so I would intersperse that in there but okay. it's a lot it's a lot of other people's pins okay. um but you want to just be you want to pin and be this amazing curator and pin a lot and then that's where the eyes start going to you and they'll start okay. going to that board because you just want to get a lot of eyes on there and then right. they'll scroll through and they'll see oh look at that awesome scarf oh look at that awesome hat yeah so that's kind of the strategy there is that's my problem I'm I have boards for like every holiday and I've got a style board which is like really cute and everything but I'm not very consistent with pinning a ton to it and then um it, I have a separate board just for my shop items. So up until recently, I wasn't really interchanging them within the boards. Um, so I need to do that more and I really need to be pinning more, I think. So yeah, definitely. <laughs> the list yeah. of things to do is always I like, know, eight, isn't I it? Know. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just true. had a correction. It's Etsy's elite group board is Etsy not elite. Etsy boost. Oh, is so that Etsy, Etsy elite like on Instagram Etsy elite? I'm it may sure. be the same group. I okay, have written down I'm... the Speckled Owls um, girls group, but I could be wrong about that. Um, but for some reason, actually... I have written down Speckled Owls. Right. Oh, okay. I'm actually doing a promoted um, – Instagram thing over on Etsy Elite on Instagram. Oh, so that's why I was like, oh, I wonder if it's the same group. Maybe it is. Yeah, maybe. Sweet. I have to ask about that. 
Um, and then I was going to tell you too, I know um, Amy Gabriel, she has, I'll copy her link to her Pinterest, but if you scroll down on her Pinterest, she is a part of a lot of other Etsy group boards as well. Okay. So you can okay. go to her account and get some more ideas. And she even told us that at least last year for Christmas, she was able to track a few sales directly from Pinterest because people had used her coupon code. That's so awesome. yeah, so that was pretty exciting. Um, trying to think of other ways that aren't going to involve a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, you know, it's not too late to pitch for gift guides because mm, if you're going to be part I did of do some of those. Guides, yeah. Oh, you did? Okay. I did. And it was so sad because I heard back from one of them. They're like, we love your products, but we already finished. I'm like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. I pitched to two magazines and then I actually pitched to, about six different really classy looking blogs that had a lot of cute color to them and everything. Yeah. And so it was a mixture of lifestyle and fashion kind of deal. So I pitched to them and I only heard back from one of them. And the one I heard back was like, oh, we already finished. Sorry. Oh, no. So I know. It was really okay. Sad. Um, did you follow up with the other six? Did you send like a no. reminder email? Do no. it. Do it. Okay. Seriously, it's not rude. It's not rude. If you've waited at least a week or like 10 days, go back and just say, hey, so-and-so, just wanted to make sure you saw my email. What Really look. And you know what I like to do? I don't know if this is overconfident or what, but I feel like it puts the right mentality in the brain. I'll say something you like. <laughs> Sarah, you guys oh, okay. crack me up because you guys remind me. I have a, It's me, my younger sister and brother, and you guys remind me so much of. Sarah, you remind me of me, and then like Bethany, you remind me of my younger sister. But she's always like, oh, you know, and I'm like, why yeah. are you doing that? Yeah, exactly. Oh, I, I think I embarrass Sarah like all the time. No, she's you like, don't. Oh, no, oh, oh. Okay, I'm sorry, Bethany. So I'm sorry to oh, that's your okay. story about no, being that's overconfident. Funny. Uh, you're caught. That was funny. That was a funny comment. Um, I'll say something like, really looking forward to working with you. Thanks. <laughs> like, I like to say something like that. Or when we do a podcast pitch, like, uh -huh. in my mind, I'm just assuming that they're saying yes. Now, I'm not – I write the email in a nice, friendly tone. I'm complimentary of them. It's not like I'm like, look at me. I'm so awesome. But I'm very yeah. positive in the fact that, like, I'm looking forward to working with you or <laughs> looking forward to chat. And, and I'll say for the podcast, I'll be like, looking forward to chatting with you soon. And <laughs> – Right. I don't know. I, I feel like it works because they're like, oh, yeah, I guess I am supposed to do that. Like, I don't know. I think somehow, like, mentally makes you oh, be like, oh, true. yeah, I guess, I guess we will chat soon. And then they go and schedule their podcast interview. Um, I just had a good idea for you, Julie, possibly. Um, what about some guest posting where you talked about, like, a technique or you talk about – I don't know so about maybe quality fabrics and why it's important to buy quality or you t or not fabrics um, materials or you talk about right. maybe your switch to to a higher quality or the problems with lower quality or something like that a guest post where your expertise could shine through or maybe supporting an article about supporting local businesses yeah, right? yeah. like a family right. story about what what your business means to you type thing, and right. then link back to your Etsy shop potentially. You know, I wanted to ask you guys about that. Um, the article you guys wrote for the Etsy blog a while back, mm -hmm. um, yeah. who did you pitch that to? Because what I wanted to do was I really wanted to do a write-up on – um, like you're saying, the quality materials, the difference mm -hmm. it really makes. Yeah. And then also like a color guide as well. Like how would you mix and match uh, a winter accessory item with other colors when all the other colors are usually dull or muted during that seasonal time? You know, mm -hmm. how would you do that? That's the kind of write-up I want to do. And then like also sprinkle in the s local makers or small businesses that I actually use to incorporate into my businesses, like my tag here, I'm going to give a shameless plug to all this wood on Etsy. They make these gorgeous tags um, and they laser engrave them. It's in a, it's like a mom and pop shop, but they do a beautiful job yeah. and um, just kind of, you know, give props to them within the writing as well. But who did you guys pitch that to? Because I was really sure. interested in that. Yeah. I pitched it to Julie Schneider. Julie Schneider. So, yeah. And she, 
um, yeah, I somehow I figured out that she was the editor of the Etsy blog, and I think she okay. still is, as far as I know. So I sent her a message. I pitched it in a message to her on Etsy, and um, it came back with like an auto responder saying like, "Hey, if you need this, go here. If you need this," and so then it did direct me to. There's a very official, like a formal type of form for okay. guest posting with them. So you do have to jump through some hoops. But so I went ahead and I. Fill out the whole form. Um, okay, so one thing they'll ask for is writing samples. So okay. I had a link to other blog posts that I felt like, okay, I did a really good job with my writing yeah. on a certain post. So, but I know you have your blog, and so yeah, if you have a few blog posts where you're like, oh yeah, I'm really confident this was, you know, a good write up. It doesn't have yeah. to be on the same topic, just to show them kind of your writing style. Yeah. Um, that was, and then they wanted like my experience on Etsy, and I really think they give preference to to Etsy sellers, which is great because I I know other people have tried to pitch who don't sell on Etsy, and I don't I, I think it's harder for them to get accepted. Um, yeah, so that was mostly it, and then really, oh, I did try to also say I thought this would be a great compliment to your um blog post on x topic and i think okay. i actually i think i pitched three ideas to them and they picked the podcast one but with all of my ideas like i made it really clear that like i know that blog like i know the etsy blog and i knew other things that were similar they had talked about and how mine would build upon that so yeah okay. i think like your um the high quality materials is is perfect and i'm sure you could find kind of it's like almost like scaffolding to like build yours upon to show how it yeah. how it relates to other topics they've talked about. Um, one thing I would caution is be be really specific like don't try to cover too much in one post because yeah. Etsy does I mean on the Etsy blog they tr they keep their posts pretty basic and pretty short like yeah, yeah pretty short. Pretty short yeah yeah so that's I would true. like when you were talking I was thinking like oh that sounds like three different blog posts and so, and okay. you can definitely pitch all three. You can definitely okay. pitch all three. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's my tips. Oh, good, sir. I was just gonna, that colors idea that you had, which I thought was excellent. Yeah. I mean, a fashion blog would be a perfect place to pitch that idea. It sounds a bit different from what Etsy normally covers, but maybe not. Gotcha. But there's yeah, got to be a million fashion blogs. I don't read fashion blogs, but there must be. <laughs> Yeah. A million places out there. Um, that's actually something that I was talking to Bethann about over email where I'm wanting to make that I don't offer any digital products because I'm not really interested in going in the route of selling my patterns or anything at this point, but to actually offer a printable style guide to where it features the six colors from my shop and then offering the three complementary colors and then the three contrasting colors below it in a stylized format to where it's really pretty like a pretty printable basically but at the same time it's like hey that would look really good with her cowl you know yeah. that kind of thing mm -hmm. so that's kind of what i'm wanting to eventually work towards so i yeah. like that kind of yeah. like how stitch fix sends you the little card yeah, with ways you yeah. can accessorize mm -hmm. what they yeah. sent you i love it that's I, great yeah I think that would be perfect. And that's the one thing too, I think with Etsy sellers, like we often feel like, oh, well, I'm not a style expert or I'm not a this, but it's like, you totally are a style expert. You're a style expert on your unique style. Exactly. And so yeah. yeah, if you show people like, hey, I know what I'm doing. I know ex yeah, exactly how my scarf looks with all these outfits, yeah. And the other thing too, Julie, one thing I think Etsy sellers forget about in terms of marketing on Pinterest is you can upload whatever image you want there. So mm -hmm. you can take a beautiful, tall, skinny, vertical photo that's like maybe a fashion photo or like a fashion layout on Polybor, and you can take that and make it link to a listing in your Etsy shop. Can you do the oblong ones on Polybor? Oh, I think you'd have to crop it in. You'd have to. Oh, okay. You could, but you could like arrange them so they're all kind of vertical, and then just oh. and then take that and right. I just do like a screenshot and then I crop it in. Yeah. Right. So then it's I didn't long. think about that. I don't know why. Like, because I always, um, whenever I upload it to Instagram, I do a screenshot too, but it's yeah. always a square, square. So I wasn't thinking about like the opposite, yeah. one, you know? Yeah. Stretch so. it vertical for Pinterest, okay. and it'll catch people's eye. And yes, like. I mean, I think there's maybe a little bit of like you don't want to do a, a bait and switch where there's they're like, wait, what? 
But like if you're, if one of your products is in that awesome outfit, I think that makes mm. perfect sense. You gave them outfit inspiration and they're like, oh, I want to find out more. And so right. it takes them right to their shop. They're like, oh, sweet. Okay. Well, she's offering one of those things and they still got the style inspiration. It's not like, it's not like you needed to write an entire blog post about that outfit. I mean, you could, you could also do that too. Cause that's, you know, that's a great strategy, but if you have limited time, just come up with the outfit inspiration or that great, gorgeous vertical photo and yeah, send it right to your shop. Right. That's a good idea. Hey, welcome. We have some new, new people joining in. Oh, Sarah said hi already. I was trying to figure out, I was like, who is this person? I was like, oh, that's Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I need to switch out my picture. That's, um, I need to make it more oh, yeah. businessy picture on Twitter. <laughs> but that's okay. Well, maybe somebody in, somebody that's listening, does anybody that's listening have a great idea for Julie on how she can get the word out about her shop? We only have like a, <laughs> we don't have that many. It says I think only 11 eyes are like watching right now. So yeah. Oh, okay. thank you. Someone said great. Oh, blast. she's using her cozy. Julie's using her cozy. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love that. That's the blessed one. So and cute. The, the button is actually from all this wood as well to where ah. they customized it with my shop name. Although I know it's hard to see on its camera, but the shop name goes all the way around it. Okay. That is smart. Yeah, it's so smart for you to brand your items like that so that people can A, repurchase, or B, when their friends tell them how much they love that at Starbucks, they can send them right your direction. That's yeah. awesome. Right. And two, the re another reason why I did the button, too, is because a lot of times – you know, you use like a hang tag or you include your business card or a little postcard size note in there. But then honestly, sometimes it gets tossed and nobody yeah, can go yes. it. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you know what happens? This is like the Etsy sellers, the bane of their existence is when they hear <laughs> someone say, oh, where'd you get that cute scarf? Oh, I got it on Etsy. And oh, you're like, no! right. I was like, great. And, it doesn't yeah, help me. It doesn't help at all. <laughs> yeah. So the fact that yours, yeah, you have the branding right there. Yeah. So people well, won't forget. Speaking of that, if you've got your branding right on there on the coffee cozy, is there maybe, I don't want to say a celebrity, but maybe um, somebody with influence out there that is related to coffee somehow? And kind of like how Jill did, how she sent her cuffs, her rustic cuffs to, right. yeah, to like celebrities. Now you'd have to be, you know, you can't send too much product, but right. because it's right there. So if somebody's in a coffee shop all the time, yeah, using their cozy and oh, where'd you get that? But I don't know, maybe that would be too obscure. Or maybe you know, that's a good idea. I not necessarily I wasn't thinking of a celebrity, but I actually because my husband's a graphic designer, he does a lot of work for, you know, local companies and whatnot. And a lot of them are really cute hipster like shops, you know, and one of them is a coffee shop in Atlanta that he does a little bit of work for. And it's not a I mean, they have a chain, but it's not like a massive yeah, oh. kind of deal. I should contact her and be like, "Hey, don't you want these in your shop?" Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, to sell, like, to sell wholesale to them, yeah. or even just to gift a couple, so that when they were using them, they could. Yeah, that's probably a good idea because, like, for me, wholesale is really hard, just because. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, um, oh, the Better Life bags. When I was listening to her podcast, I was like, I could totally relate because if I were with the materials that I use and the time that it takes, if I were to, you know, sell it wholesale, I would have to really up my retail price too. Mm -hmm. And while, you know, it is a quality product, I think most people wouldn't be willing to pay it, you know? So that's the challenge that I have with wholesale, but mm -hmm. yeah. That makes sense then. Yeah. Stick with what's going to work like that streamlined doing retail. And yeah, but yeah, I would try that out of giving the owners, you know, some cozies that they can, right. they could be using all the time while they're in their shop. I was thinking about too, um, like there's got to be someone with like a YouTube channel or a YouTube show where they like sip their coffee while they chat. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. 
You need somebody who sips though, because a lot of times they'll put them into their nice mugs, but you need people who are like, yeah, who like do their YouTube show at the coffee shop. And so they've just mm. got their paper cup or whatever. Right. Yeah. yeah. There's got to be something. Hmm. There's got to be a YouTuber who sits in a Starbucks <laughs> somewhere. There has to be. Yeah. Or I a know. blabber. You can find yeah. a blabber. A That's blabber. true. Find a blabber. Someone on here <laughs> on blab who, yeah, <laughs> is always drinking coffee. I know. That'd be hard, though. The I don't know how you would figure yeah. that out. Yeah. Oh, or if, or even just like a friend, like if you have a friend who hangs out in the coffee shop all the time, or I know like our assistant pastor at our church, he like writes sermons in his, in the coffee shop a lot of the time. I, I don't know. That could be maybe too random. You probably sell effectively. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. I'll have to figure that one out. Cause that's a good yeah. idea for sure. I'm Googling right now, YouTube show in a coffee shop. <laughs> I'm not I don't see anything yet that catches my eye, but okay. Yeah. I'm trying to think I, we... I did want to ask you really quick, Julie, before yeah. we wrap up. Um as far as we were just talking about pricing. Right. It is that tricky since the time that it takes you to make each product. I would imagine like that cowl that you're wearing right there, that to me looks like it would take forever. <laughs> well, it, I mean, have you worked it out where it's worth your time and with the materials that you use to? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, what I did was um, I have a kitchen scale. And what I do is I weigh the yarn after a product has been made. And so that will tell me because, you know, when you purchase the yarn, it tells you how much the weight of that skein of yarn is. So okay. I can figure out how many skeins of yarn it took based yeah. on or I can get down to, oh, did it take three quarters of a skein to finish it out? That kind of thing. So I put, it on awesome. the kitchen scale. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I put it on the kitchen scale and that will tell me exactly how much the weight is. And then I divide it by how much was each, each skein so I can figure out the pricing that way. And then I also track my hours initially when I first make one. And I also make I, I make allowances for like. My son comes in and mommy, can I play with you? You know, and then I basically, I don't use an actual timer, but look at the clock and say, okay, this, at this time I stopped and whatnot. So I'm actually calculating the exact time. And then I also take into fact that with knitting and crocheting, the chunkier it is, the less time it takes. So like, this is not one strand of yarn. This is four strands of yarn at the same time that I'm knitting with at the same time. And the needles are that big around. So each stitch covers way more space than like one wow. teeny tiny stitch would. That's why whenever I was talking to Bethann initially, when I was talking about starting this fall line, we were talking about, you know, different textures. And that's why I was mainly steering towards the chunkier knit because A, it does look more modern, but B, mm -hmm. it takes so much less time. And with knitwear, 90% of the time, you're charging mainly for your time because it's so time consuming. So that's, that's how awesome. I kind of figured that one out. <laughs> yeah. I love that. That yeah. is clever. Yeah. Clever. Okay. So you've, you've clearly done the math and it is worth your time. Yeah. You're, you're making a fair wage on each product. Right. That's great. Very smart. And I remember talking with Julie, um, like last year over Skype and I was amazed at how fast you are at your craft like Julie, oh. <laughs> because you've been crocheting since childhood right right so, right I started crocheting when I was eight and then a year later I taught myself how to knit wow. and it was kind of like how my mom was able to rein in my um I wasn't officially ADD but I was like all over the place so she's <laughs> like you've got to be able to focus you need to learn how to crochet <laughs> so yeah. that's how I started that Oh, yeah. I should totally teach my daughters how to. Well, I don't know. I'd have to learn myself, but maybe I should take them for a class or something. Yeah. Because I feel like focus. I feel like focus is an issue with it's my kids. It's very calming too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. They're not wild, but they don't know how to like pay attention and focus. Right. Yeah. Right. You have mm -hmm. to really. I mean, like once you get used to a pattern and if it's repetitive, you don't have to like, oh my goodness, I got to focus on every stitch. But there is a, a point of where you have to really be paying attention to what you're doing or you might end up with a hole or you might miss a stitch, you know, that kind of thing. So without even thinking about it, it's really bringing in your focus on that project. Mm -hmm. 
So that's really yeah. cool. Yeah, that is. I wanted to touch back really quick because in the chat, people were saying, or a periscoper. And it got me thinking, Julie, there are a few periscopers that may be really good to send your coffee cozies to, especially because of the positive messages that you have on yours. Like you have blessed and you have choose joy. Right. Um, I can think of a few pretty popular periscopers who may be able to potentially send some traffic your awesome. way. I haven't um, tried periscope yet. Um, Scott uses it all the time with his buddies in clientele. So I'll have to look into that for sure. Yeah, but yeah I would love to get into and that. And, and one tip too. Okay, so if you send it to them, I'll give you the names in a sec. If you send it to them, I would set up a profile for yourself on Periscope just so when they say, oh, this is by at Tokyo Blossom, they can check you out right on Periscope. And then from right. there, you'll link to your Etsy shop. It'll just make that, it'll just make it one step easier for them to right. find you. Um, but okay, so the people that are coming to mind, one is Jess Connolly because um, she periscopes quite a bit and she's got a big falling over there and she's you know oh. obviously very pop she's you know from nap time diaries and she's uh, always like sharing about her faith and um she has a print it's like a print shop that she has isn't it friday that. introductions oh well but so well cool. she's on yes that's her it's the same girl okay. yeah but she's on periscope now so she does okay. her own periscopes and then um crystal Payne is on periscope she periscopes every day and i feel like i mean not that i mean i guess there's no guarantee on who's going to be like yes and use it but if you just send it to them and say like hey i love what you do thought maybe this would be fun if you wanted to if you were sipping your coffee while you periscope right. i would definitely mention that that's the thing i wouldn't just send it to them i would suggest to them like how you want them to use it i actually like, got to meet crystal a couple months back so oh, sweet yeah yeah, yeah. She's great. And then uh, some other big names. Erin Odom is on Periscope. Um, Ruth Sukup is on Periscope. And those are all ladies that are very positive, very encouraging. And I feel like they and their audience would really resonate with the positive messages that you have on your cozies. Right. So that's, that's true. That's, that's a good, good idea. Ideas for you. Oh, right. Crystal Payne. Let me see. I'll see if I can get you the link, Angie, to her Periscope um, channel. And then they don't, with the button that you have on there, Julie, they don't have to like look up where they got your cozy from. They'll just glance yeah, at your that's cute true. button. I love yeah. that. <laughs> are those buttons and the things that you get from that other company that they do for you, are they leather? Is that what the tags no. are made out of? You know, I originally, when I first started thinking about this, I was going to do a leather tag. Um, but with leather, there's so many variables of like, can it be submersed in water? Will it like curl once it gets submersed in water when you soak your product to wash it? And so I was like, you know what? I don't want to end up with a mess after my customer gets a product. So I actually went with a cherry wood and they offer like three or four different kinds of wood. I like the cherry because it's not too dark, but mm -hmm. also I didn't want yeah. to do it too light like a maple. So that's a that's an engraved cherry wood. Excellent. I, yeah. I do love that. I love it. And you like Julie, you are off to a great start. I mean, your branding is there, your product quality is there, you're telling this great story with your shop. So and like you said your too, your photos look great. Yeah. Thank you. You're, yeah, and you're at that point too, like you said, you're so proud of your products now, you're excited to tell everybody. And we've been there too, I've been to the point, like I think you probably relate to this, Sarah. When we had that little jewelry business, I didn't tell a lot of people that we were making jewelry because <laughs> Oh, you have to be so often. proud of me. I went to the chiropractor the other day when I sold, when I was filling out the paperwork, I put down self-employed for the first time. Yay! I was like, praise the Lord. <laughs> awesome, I love it, you are. Absolutely. No, it's definitely yes, I, I definitely agree with you, Bethann, though. Like, you have to take pride until you take pride in what you do and you want to tell everybody about what you're doing. You know, it's hard to put yourself out there in the way that you should until you get to that place where you're like, this is what I do. I'm good at it. My products are great. What I do is great. And I want to tell the world about it in a way that is not annoying, which I'm yeah. sure 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Julie, I, I don't feel, I couldn't ever see you as an aggressive, no. like. Yeah. I'm not, and that's how the problem. Remember that email I sent you? I was looking for the email for that lady who was the assistant editor for the magazine yes. I was pitching to, uh -huh. and I couldn't find her email. So I looked and looked and looked and stalked her on Google and found her personal portfolio and found her personal email. And I actually emailed Beth and I was like, I feel so stalkerish emailing her on her personal <laughs> email. And I was like, listen, she's not going to know how you got it. She's probably used to that happening other times. All she's going to notice is the message that shows up in her inbox. You know what I mean? So, yeah. That's why. Uh, <laughs> Don't overanalyze. Just uh, get it out there. <laughs> oh, man. Well, should we start start to wrap yeah, things we should up? Probably, yeah, we should. Sullivan is going to start to revolt. I know. Yeah. Mine's <laughs> probably going to be up pretty soon, too. Yeah. <laughs> but this was really fun. I'm glad we yeah, got to do this Yeah, this was really Julie. fun. Thanks for taking the time to do this. this I really enjoyed it, for sure. sure. Yeah, yeah, and keep us posted. I'd love to hear, yeah, how things continue to go for you and what things are working and all of that. So, the absolutely. Christmas season is upon us, and if we all I know. take some effort to shop small business and and support each other in the brilliant business moms community, it could be it could be awesome. It takes planning in order to do that, <laughs> and maybe a little bit more time rather than just going on Amazon and loading up our carts. Nothing against Amazon, but if we all make a little bit of effort to support each other, then it could be really awesome for everybody. Yeah, definitely. Okay, well, thank you, Julie. And oh, I have to say this last comment from Angie. Julie, Aww. you're a gem. I'll be following to see what you're up to. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> and, oh, and Julie, say your uh, yes. website one more time. Oh, right. It's um, it's Tokyo. Um, the name on it is Tokyo Blossom Boutique, but the web address is um, the Etsy.com slash Tokyo Blossom. And then a lot of my social media is just straight up Tokyo Blossom as well. Awesome. There we go. And we are BrilliantBusinessMoms.com. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, everyone, for chatting with us today. Um, this will be up on the blog next week with some notes and links and things like that. So you can always check that out as well. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks, Julie. All right, Bye. I'm going to close you guys out. Bye. Bye.